Have you noticed that everything at the grocery store has gotten smaller? Check this bag of M&Ms out. What? Doesn't look odd to you? This is a family size, 28 servings. Hey there, folks. Welcome to the Wednesday Word, where we're bringing you words of encouragement direct from the Holy Scriptures, of course. And folks, as always, I hope you're having a great week. But if you are not, you have come to the right place because nothing is more encouraging than the Word of God. And you know, folks, one of the ways that companies get away with selling us smaller products without many people noticing is that they do it gradually. A little bit here, a little bit there over time, and people just don't notice at all. And sometimes they'll even make the amount in the box smaller without changing the size of the box at all. Between these tactics, and plus the fact that many people are just preoccupied with other things, over time, the size of the product gets very much smaller than what we remember it used to be. And unfortunately, folks, the same scenario can happen in the role that we give to Jesus in our lives. Yes, and that applies to everyone, even those of us who attend church every week. If we're not careful, we can get to a point where all of a sudden we notice, hey, Jesus just is not as big of a part of my life as he used to be. And to avoid that happening, we need to constantly remind ourselves what John the Baptist said in reference to Jesus. He said, I must decrease, he must increase. Now, if you've been a member at Victor Baptist for a while, you'll know that our pastor, Pastor Ken Vickery, he talks about this point a lot. Um, but even if you're already familiar with it, this is a concept that we really need to take to heart. And we can never remind ourselves of this too much. This quote takes place not long after Jesus told Nicodemus that only those who were born again would see the kingdom of God. After that, Jesus went out to oversee his disciples as they baptized people who had begun to follow him. And not far from him, in the same region, John the Baptist and his followers were baptizing people. And some of John's disciples, they see what's going on and they come back to John and say, hey, everybody's going over to Jesus and being baptized. You know, so what's up with that, John? They seem to be getting a little bit jealous because Jesus was getting more attention than John the Baptist was. But John shut them down really quick and set them straight. John answered, A person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. He must increase and I must decrease. John doesn't have his own ego as a priority. He knows his role in his relationship to Jesus. He says, I must decrease, but Jesus must increase. And by the way, did Jesus increase? You bet he did. You know, when he took on human form, he took on all the weakness and human frailty that we have. But unlike us, Jesus also was divine in nature. And though he sacrificed his human body on the cross for us, he raised that body again. He defeated death and ascended to heaven where he sits in power over all the universe at the right hand of the Father. It doesn't get any more increase than that. And that is how we need to see Jesus every day. We too often see Jesus as something much smaller than that. Something just to help us out, to make us feel good, make us happy. But he's so much more than that. He is the king. The gospel message is not that you can be happy and have peace. The good news is that Jesus is king and he is worthy to be praised. Jesus isn't a magic genie to give out wishes and he's not our co-pilot to uh, help us navigate our hectic lives. Jesus is king and we are his subjects whose job it is to glorify him. Not for the purpose of making us feel good, but for the simple reason that he is glorious. And the ironic thing is, folks, we will only find happiness and peace when we stop focusing on our own happiness and peace. The more you focus on your own happiness and peace, the more impossible it becomes to find them. Because you were not made to serve yourself. 
you were made to glorify Jesus and to serve him. So we need to stop asking ourselves, what can Jesus do for us? And start asking, what can we do to praise Jesus and to glorify him? You've probably heard this acronym that describes what our priorities should be, but it's worth repeating even if you have. First comes Jesus, then comes others, and then comes you. And of course, J-O-Y spells joy. If you put you first, then it just doesn't work out. You either get your Joe or Yodge. And folks, nobody wants Yodge, am I right? Dear Lord, we thank you so much for all that you've done for us. We thank you so much that you are the king and that you are worthy to be praised. And Lord, we just come here to praise you and to give you all the glory. And we ask you to help us know that, to help us to continue to remember that our job is to serve you and to glorify you and to put you first in all things because you are king. Dear Lord, we thank you so much and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Victor family. I hope you have a wonderful week. Yeah, no, no, I just got done. Yeah, I was going to ask you, I thought I had this little gag at the end where I did like a, you know, like the acronym JOY, but I did the letters backwards like YAJ. I don't know. It sounds kind of stupid. I may redo it. Hey, 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 come back, come back. Whoa, hold on. I just saw an ant running away with my king-size Kit Kat.